everyone. Happy Monday. Thanks for checking in on Facebook Live. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagna. We just finished AMHQ, so came over here to the lab to check in with your Facebook questions, give you a good overview of the week's weather. It's starting off busy again. It's a Monday, and I tell you what, it feels like a Monday out there already as you get going, and we've got some weather issues to start your day. Catherine Prosif, our weather producer, with me as well today. So she is running the... Uh, Running the maps, and she is the, she is, we call her Tidbit, because she is the mastermind of all these fantastic weather tidbits and stats and everything else um, that we put together. So you'll get a lot out of this today, I think. All right, look at today's forecast. We've got red on the map as far north as Minnesota. Yes, it is March the, what, 6th. And we are talking about storms pretty far north, warm air heading north as well. Chicago, another day, not just above 50, but practically 60. Our storm system coming in today, and this is going to bring the possibility of severe weather. Dallas, we're going to hit 80. Not likely to see storms here today, but warm and very, very windy. And windy is going to be a huge story as well, really for the eastern two-thirds of the country. So here's our system. You can see, um, first of all, the moisture spreading all the way north here, uh, right across the Mississippi Valley. Then behind it, We've got cold air diving in. Plenty of snow to talk about in the mountains of Colorado and in Wyoming and even Montana as well. A lot of wind energy overall with this whole pattern we got going on. And we have a surface low that's developing as we speak. It's going to move all the way up, right up here, right through the Dakotas. And on the back edge of it, this will be snow, that, that moisture that we will see here right across, say, Montana into North Dakota. And I mentioned it's going to be windy, right? So we could have blizzard conditions as well. Let's talk more, though, first about the severe weather and the risk for that today. Dew points are returning, and you can see dew points already back to the 60s. You feel it if you step outside to walk the dog this morning or get your kids to the bus stop. You feel it. Temperatures are up, but dew points are up as well. But moisture returning all the way up into Iowa, into Minnesota. And what you really notice is that you don't have all that static electricity. I mean, you know, overall, the past couple of days, it was so dry that you're walking across the carpet and you zap things, right? That's not the case anymore because now the moisture is returning. And that's going to be one of the factors we look at for possible storms. Now, the moisture is limited up here in Minnesota and Iowa. It's much better further south. The upper level energy is better farther north. So it's not a complete matchup of ingredients for today. We do have the risk for severe storms, though, even with that, because there's some, you know, an, enough instability to get things going. From Texarkana to Little Rock to Kansas City to St. Louis, we're going to track thunderstorms. Damaging winds and hail would be the main threat today. There is an isolated tornado risk. It's a 4 out of 10 from southwestern Missouri um, to eastern Oklahoma. And then on the other side of the state, over here into eastern Missouri and eastern Arkansas, it is a 3 out of 10 on the Torcon floor today. The timing is important. So this is, again, the end of the day kind of situation, getting into the overnight that we will see thunderstorms. Here's a look at how the forecast radar plays out for today. So this is our future radar. Minneapolis you may see a couple of showers early in the day, but overall, the better chance for hearing any thunder is this evening. This is 7 o'clock tonight. That's when thunderstorms are going to be rolling east through Minnesota, through middle of Iowa, back down to Kansas City, the tail end of the commute or the dinner hour. That's when you can expect thunderstorms. After that, they cross the Show Me State. We get thunderstorms in St. Louis, 1 o'clock this morning. Get to bed early so you get some decent sleep before these loud thunderstorms move on through and then wake you up. Hopefully you can fall back asleep again. There is a chance for severe weather. Chicago, not likely to see severe weather, but you could get some rumbles of thunder moving through overnight tonight, Chicago, and then getting into the Detroit area in Cincinnati for the rush hour tomorrow morning. Get ready for that, guys. I know that'll slow things down. And then spreading into the Northeast, and as cold as it is right now in the Northeast, this will come in the way of rain for you. So um, don't worry about the snow and ice there. All right, let's talk more about, though, where you could be getting some severe weather right here across the heartland. We've got Springfield right in the heart of the risk for hail. So hail today, an inch in size or greater, that could do some damage to your, maybe your, your roof tiles, uh, your shingles, I should say, the chance that maybe some dents in your car as well. So that's going to be one to watch there. Also, some strong damaging winds are possible in really the same area. This is sort of the best, uh, best ingredients coming together for severe weather from Missouri right back down into the Ozarks region of Arkansas right here. And Jen, a couple are dark, right? Yeah. And so this will not be a good day to track storms indeed. And it's tough for spotters, uh, of course, to yep. see when it's dark out, not to mention the, the trees and everything else across this region. So this is going to be an area of, of concern. Now, tomorrow, 
as the upper level energy again is way up here. We still have our front that trails back into southeast Texas and Louisiana. So ahead of it tomorrow, we will watch for thunderstorms. Houston, you have another chance of rain and storms. This comes after record rainfall. And Catherine, it was over four inches yesterday. What was the total? Do you I think it was either their second wettest. Second wettest March right? day. March day on record. Yes. So they got drenched. Yes. And that comes now rain comes back into the picture again tomorrow. Um, it does not look like totals should be that high. Uh, the front will be a bit more progressive, which is good news. Um, we'll get that through, but we do have the chance for rain. All right, so here we take it into the timing. A couple of showers are possible today through this area. It's not like you're not going to get rain until tomorrow, but the chance for storms comes in tomorrow. As we see ahead of the front, there'll be a squall line likely developing. It could be one of these line echo wave pattern type of situations where you can get some little kinks and some uh, you know bursts of gusty winds along it. That's what we'll see as the main risk getting into tomorrow. But this is 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Now the front's coming through Birmingham and Atlanta after dark and so hopefully that will cut down on the instability and cut down any risk of severe weather you know further south we could see some strong stronger winds we'll see but again the, the jet stream energy is all up here so we do not have that down here as we see this line of thunderstorms move through tomorrow that's great news because we don't want to see severe weather right you know, so Jen uh, tornado count since 2012. Yes. Into the season. So this is a look at the average tornadoes by month, just to give you an indication of, you know, where we are, what we should be expecting this time of year. March, things start ramping up. April, May, June, I mean, and July. These are our busy months when it comes to tornado reports based on history. But March can be a busy month, and so we want to make sure that you are ready, you have your plans ready, you have a way to get warnings, you have a way to get woken up if warnings are issued always. You know, just be ready for that so that when the time comes, you don't have to rush to, uh, to get everything, uh, all your plans underway. Let me see who's, uh, who's checking in this morning. We've got a Cambridge Springs. Linda, good morning to you. Deborah in Western Kentucky. Um, we should talk about the Northeast and just how cold you and dry it is. Let's do Since it. We've got a Pennsylvania. A couple, uh, couple New Yorkers here. Ben from Fort Edward, New York. Good morning. Um, and Paula says no more storms or snow for Michigan. You can't have it both ways, Paula. You can't have all of that. You can pick Go one, one maybe. Or the other. All right, Bo uh, Boston, New York, Philly, D.C. Let's talk about your temperatures. So it was so cold yesterday morning. I was up there. It was cold. And people were saying, is this, is this the coldest we had all season? Almost. 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 So your coldest day since. For Philly and D.C., January 10th, New York, January 9th, and Boston, your coldest morning since December 16th. So our memories are short, right? This is the <laughs> coldest of the, you know, of the year anyway for you in Boston. Um, and this morning was a chilly one, a very dry one. You know, we warmed up a degree or two cold, warmer than these spots uh, this morning, but, you know, not by much. So we will get a warming trend this morning, though. You just started off on a cold note and very dry. Dew points were down sub-zero in Boston. So not only was the air cold, but your dew uh. points, I mean, this is <laughs> Arctic air up here. Look at this, Catherine. Yeah, no thank you. You needed extra water. You, yes. I mean, my hair, I was up here, my hair was just standing on end and I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't combing it. I wasn't rubbing a balloon on my head. It right. just was that staticky and dry. And of course, the yes. so we, we got our cold. But you'll notice, look at Pittsburgh already, our dew point back mm -hmm. up into the mid-40s. This is a sign of what's to come. So winds are from the south, bringing back up some moisture, um, bringing back up some warmer air. We're going to see a change in the pattern back to average and above average temperatures. So Pittsburgh already, you know, we could get a couple of showers out there possibly today. Buffalo, it would be rain showers, no snow for you. Michigan, um, I think it was uh, Linda from Michigan. Um, if you get anything today, it would be rain showers, not snow showers. So it's warm enough that that's going to be the case for your forecast. And even Boston recovering nicely to 39 degrees today. We'll warm it up for you in the next couple of days as well. Here's a look at Boston and this roller coaster temperatures we got going on. By Wednesday, we're back to the mid 50s. But then this weekend, there's another really cold air mass coming back. Look at us. These are temperatures, these are high temperatures in the 20s, Boston on Saturday and Sunday. Cold is coming back. So, Catherine, we got to look at the chance of snow. Let's look. This is a yeah. week out. So, I want to yeah. put that uncertainty. It'll out change. There. Yes. But we're still talking about it. It's in the models. It's showing up in your seven day forecast. So, let's look at the potential for some accumulating snow into the weekend. We've got our two favorite models, the GFS, the American model, and the European model. This is the GFS, a stripe of snow from our weekend system that stretches from the upper Midwest, maybe right here through uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and then into the Mid-Atlantic, the chance for accumulating snowfall. These colors indicate just sort of levels at this point, heavier snow potential from the GFS compared to the European, 
but you can see they both have accumulating snow in some very similar areas. Uh, Chicago, maybe you could get some snow out of this. It's possible south of there. Indianapolis, you're in the mix. Possibility. Even the D.C. area has the chance, anyway, of some snowfall. And after our paltry winter so far of oh. 1.4 inches, D.C., wouldn't this be something to get if we got some snow at this point in the season? I believe at least snowy is since... Uh, the start of the century. You and so, I are having a this kind of stuff here. Look, if you're a baseball fan, you love stats. And if you're yes, a weather fan, you love we stats. We love stats. And Baltimore, I'm yeah. from the D.C. area, and so I have friends who are teachers, and they haven't had snow days yet. So do they, they want snow days. Do they get to get out of school earlier in June if that's, they don't have snow days? That's a great. All right. So, so here's how it's going to play out. And someone yep. just joined from Delaware, too, David. Um, and so you're, you're in the mix for some of this potential wintry weather. Here's what's going to happen. The start to the week, it's mild, and that mild air spreads east. And you do warm up in the northeast and the Midwest before the cold sweeps in. This is round one of average cold. And this time of year, it's cold enough to bring wintry precip. But there's some reinforcing cold that comes in over the weekend, Saturday into Sunday. And it's actually very cold up here into the northeast and cold enough into the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic. So if there's something to make it rain or snow, with this kind of cold air, it would be snow, and there is something. So we've got one clipper coming through at the start of the weekend. Another system that gets us act together Saturday and Sunday. This one has a bit more potential, and both models have it. Um, both are very similar in their tracks. Um, the GFS model has a little more moisture and sort of a little more energetic. But either way, you know, there's some similarities. So it gives us a little more confidence that something could happen with the wintry weather getting into the weekend. All right, so this is the European model. We track the low east. Um, it taps into first some Gulf moisture, then some Atlantic moisture, giving us that chance Ooh. for wintry precip to the north of that rain snow line there, that 32 degree line, getting into the weekend. Um, the uh, GFS model is similar, again, just a little more bullish when it comes to the amounts of precip that it's putting out, but pos position is very similar, and you see mm -hmm. that getting into this upcoming weekend. DC, I did look specifically at your stats. February 27th is actually your, your average last date of snow. Oh, and, um, nice. Yeah, mid-March mid is mm -hmm. sort of the late end of that. So and you know, spring. And Catherine, we should give one more look at the severe weather before we wrap it up here, because that is sort of our first and foremost primary concern, storms that could fire today and tonight. You know, this morning already, it's very mild all the way to Chicago. You're starting your day yeah. in your 50s. Storms yeah. are possible as far north as Minnesota. The main risk area is from Missouri back into Arkansas, where we could see severe weather. The chance for damaging winds and hail and isolated tornado risk with fours on our Torcon from southwestern Missouri into eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, and then threes on the other side of the state in Arkansas and Missouri. The timing of these storms coming in just about the dinner hour and then crossing over these states as we get into, say, the midnight time frame. So be ready for that. Be ready for a way to get your warnings um, as you uh, go to bed this evening. Here's a look at our future radar. Again, getting ready for thunderstorms as far north as Wisconsin, but a better chance of that severe weather further south. All right. Had a great group on today. Thank you guys all for your for joining us and your questions. And uh, you can join us next time. We'll be on AMHQ tomorrow morning and we'll be here on Facebook afterwards as well. Have a great day today. That's Nacio. And then we've got another system that we've got to look at for the weekend. I know it's a big holiday weekend. You know, we've got Valentine's Day on Sunday, and then we also have uh, President's Day coming up. So, you know, a lot of folks thinking of traveling. The east, the story is cold and wintry. You know, there, there's an index that shows us how bad the winter has been. And for most folks in the east, it's been mild. In Maine, it's been almost record mild when it comes to the kind of winter. All of a sudden, winter is here, and it's here all week long. We've got some snow back in the forecast for Wednesday, Thursday, a little bit of snow, especially with help from the lakes. The chill is in place throughout the east all through the week. The, the west is warm. I mean, L.A., we're going to spend all week in the 80s. Phoenix in the 80s. Dallas, we're going to be in the 70s, if not close to 80, at least midweek. But the chill is back by the end of the week, and we have to watch what happens with the potential for a storm moving east. Here we go on Sunday, diving down right here across portions of the plains, and we'll track that east through the weekend into next week. Hail wasn't going to cause any damage, right? But there was a lot of reports here that came in from across parts of the Mississippi Valley and into the Mid-Atlantic. So here's where we are right now. Um, in Griffithville, there's some concerns with high water, some high water along low-level areas of Route 3 there. Also in Fairview, hail the size, just less than a tenth of an inch, nickel-sized hail out there. That wouldn't do a ton of damage. Um, but, you know, maybe some of your sensitive plants could get disrupted, especially as things are starting to, uh, you know, get growing here as the growing season gets underway. In Sarcy, hail 
size up to an inch, that might cause some small issues. You have to check your roof after something like that. Um, but most of the hail was mainly small, which is good. Now, as we take a look at the whole pattern, here is what's going on in the east. See this general um, troughiness that's sort of digging in. Not that it's cool by any means, but it's also just providing a little bit of energy, a little pop of energy there to get us a couple showers and maybe a few thunderstorms going today. Right now, the radar is not showing much, but that's going to change, of course, when some daytime heating gets underway. Right now, east of Little Rock, we get a couple of showers. Memphis, we have a few showers out there this morning. Nothing that's really going to disrupt the commute too much. It's not widespread, I think, enough across the area. And the same thing here across the Mid-Atlantic. But there'll be more into this area today just because of that pattern that we're in in the east. As the, like I, I'll take it if, if my kids are watching. That would be a great Mother's Day present. All right, let's check in with Miami. Look right now outside, courtesy of EarthCam. Couple of uh, puffy cumulus clouds out there, but nothing that's really going to bring rain. Not yet, anyway. Rain is returning here by this weekend. Finally, so many of you are saying, we got a, a couple of rainy days in a row. So maybe it's too much. Maybe it's too much all at once. So here's Miami's forecast. Today, tomorrow, dry. Temperatures in the mid-80s. Dew points are only in the mid-60s. It's not that bad out there. But we are going to be watching for thunderstorms coming back into the picture. The rainy season gets on starting at the end of the weekend. So here's what's happening. High pressure, the classic Bermuda high pressure off into the southeast Atlantic. <clears throat> That and the flow around it coming out around in the clockwise fashion brings up moisture from the Caribbean. All that tropical moisture coming up into South Florida. And it's also coming in because of this low pressure, which isn't the strongest low, but it's just going to help with its counterclockwise flow bring in the moisture. So now we are watching for a lot of higher dew point air, a lot of moisture laden air coming into South Florida and then moving north as we get through the next five days. So tomorrow, fine. Saturday, not fine in South Florida. We bring in scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some could bring some heavy rain. This maybe won't cause any concerns for flooding just yet because everything's pretty dry going into it. But by Sunday and Monday, we've got even more big downpours coming in with thunderstorms overtaking the entire Sunshine State by the time we get into Monday. So even up to the panhandle, watching for rain to move in. And it could be heavy. You know, Some spots could get three to five inches of rainfall. That's when you start to wonder and worry about some of those urban flooding events here. We'll watch around West Palm Beach getting in through the end of the weekend for you. All right. Uh, what's